Hi everyone, this is Lauren. I'm coming to you from gooddogbadback.com, which is a website I created to help support parents of paralyzed dogs in the San Francisco Bay Area. Now I have a dog named Max and he is paralyzed, which means, as you know, he cannot urinate on his own. So he needs to have his bladder expressed. Now bladder expression is a tricky thing and unfortunately some vets out there will, rec will recommend euthanasia because it, it's hard to learn how to do. But I'm here to tell you that once you learn how to do it, it's, it becomes second nature and you don't even think about it. So I'm here to help make that steep learning curve a little bit easier for you. When the catheter comes out, you'll find that YouTube is going to be your best friend because it'll probably be midnight, you'll be trying to remember what they showed you at the vet's office, and it might feel like a distant memory. And they all make it look so easy, and that includes the YouTube videos. You'll see these people in front of the camera, and they'll just tap on the dog's bladder, and out comes the urine. And trust me, that's not what's going to happen to you the first time you try it. You're going to be pulling your hair out in anger and saying, why can't I do it like they do in the video? You are normal. Trust me. Uh, it gets easy with experience, and not every method is going to work for you. So the key is to try various methods, watch all the videos you can, and eventually one will work for you, I promise. Once one works for you, keep using that method and you'll become consistent. Once you become consistent, you'll then know what an empty bladder feels like and you'll know what a full bladder feels like. And then all of these videos will make so much more sense to you. So I promise it will get easier if you just try every method. And that's why in this video you're going to see my method and then I'm going to show you my husband Eric's method. So it's not always easy, as you can tell. Um, I am lucky because Max has learned how to spinal walk so he can stand on his own. But when I was first trying to express his bladder, he couldn't stand on his own. And so that's why this technique that I'm going to show you was really good for me because if, if your dog can't stand, you can put one arm up under here, and then this sort of braces them, and you can support their weight. So then what I do is I put my, my left hand up here, um, like right behind the rib cage. And then once you know what that water balloon feels like, you just sort of I'm squeezing around. I feel the water balloon. And then you might want to you might wonder how much pressure you should exert. And picture yourself holding a water balloon with a hole in it, and you want the water to come out of the water balloon, and that's about the amount of pressure. So firm, but not too hard. If you're doing it too hard, if, or if you find yourself exerting a lot of pressure, you probably don't have a good hold of the bladder. And it also helps to do this when the bladder is full. You're more likely to feel the water balloon. So I, I feel it right here. I'm gonna start to squeeze. see. So the one disadvantage of my method is it doesn't come out all at once. So I have to keep doing it until I feel the water balloon go away. And also you can see I end up splashing the back of his legs. So I always bring these Pampers wipes out here with me and I get the, the sensitive fragrance free kind. And it's important to wipe the urine off of the front paws because eventually that will burn their skin. So you'll see, I'll try this again. I'm holding him steady with my right hand. There's the water balloon. I kind of have to massage around and you feel it catch. So this is the method that works for me. Uh, but you'll, you'll also see my husband Eric's method and um, I, I encourage you to watch all of the YouTube videos. Everybody does it differently. Some people do it with their dogs lying on their sides. Um, that doesn't work for Max because he hates being on his side so he thrashes around and the last thing you want is your um, dog with a spinal problem thrashing around. So um, I encourage you to just look at other videos and I'll have my, my husband Eric show you his method next. So I'm going to show you an alternate method of squeezing the dog. Uh, how my method is, it's sort of a clapping motion. Your hands go together like this, then rotate it this way, and I kind of squeeze like this so that the urine is squeezed backwards toward the base of the penis because the, the piping actually goes, here's the 
Max. Straighten up, boy. Here's the bladder. And there's a pipe that goes around like this and then connects and it goes out like that. So squeeze toward the back. Now the nice thing about my technique is that you can hold the dog up in the back. I actually put one hand, if you come around back here, I put one hand between his legs so it's laying against his right side. I'm going to take a look here like this. And my fingertips are just touching the back of his rib cage. Just touching it. My other hand goes on the outside of his leg like this. Fingertips just touching the back of the rib cage. So now I have the bladder about between the uh, about on the first knuckles of my fingers. And if Max will hold still, which he usually does, he's not used to cameras, I should be able to feel the bladder. Now sometimes his abs tense up and you can't feel it at all, and the bladder pulls forward under the rib cage. What you want to do is just pet him and, and calm him down until he uh, relaxes. And what does the bladder feel like to you, Eric? Uh, well, right now it feels like not much because you did a good job squeezing it. Um, I would say it feels like it's harder than a water balloon. It's like if a water balloon's skin was uh, a centimeter thick. And I think we should, his, his tail just flicked up a little when you touched his bladder. That's also uh, a sign that you're, you're touching the right place if their, their tail moves up a bit. So I'm going to give him a squeeze here. And I just kind of start squeezing at my fingertips. Sometimes I kind of roll around like this and it seems to, to loosen up the sphincter and let things get started. And there we go, and I can now I've kind of, the bladder's migrating from my knuckles down to my palms, and I continue to squeeze near the palms, and then it gives a little squirt at the end, especially if it's a boy dog. And, and there you have it, he's, he's empty. You can tell by feel, and you can tell by uh, futility of your future attempts. So now you've seen my method and my husband Eric's method, and I have to say, Eric's method does not work for me. When we first um, had to learn how to express Max's bladder, we spent many late nights in frustration watching these YouTube videos, not understanding why it wouldn't work for us. And I, I'm just, I just want to reiterate the point that everybody's going to have a method that works for them. So watch all of the videos that you can, and eventually one is going to work by accident. Keep going with that method, and you'll get more and more successful, and then you will, you will know what a bladder feels like, and it will get easier. The vet can prescribe you medicine that helps relax the sphincter. We had that for Max. It wasn't that helpful for us, but, um, you know, it's worth a try. So if you have any comments or questions about bladder expression or um, you're looking for a community to help support you in the San Francisco Bay Area, I recommend that you visit our website, which is gooddogbadback.com. Thank you.